I can't put comment on, on Gaza where operations are being carried out without anesthetics. So we might just balance the conversation and look at our policy in relation to what we're doing. In relation to my specific question, uh, it's in relation to uh, the plans, for what plans are in being for an audit of the long-term residential care for older persons in Galway City and County. And I ask this because I'm keeping a close eye on the imbalance between public beds and private beds. Thank you very much. Much, Deputy, for your question. And on foot of a conversation we would have had in the House last year um, in relation to an audit, I requested that. So in 2022, the HEC carried out an audit on publicly funded bed capacity across all nine community healthcare organisations. We have 128 HEC public residential care centres for older people. A lot of them would be classed as a community hospital. Subsequently, the HEC completed the in depth bed reconciliation exercise that validated its publicly managed residential bed stock. The purpose of this exercise was to reconcile variances derived from the audit and agree particular bed data going forward with a view to providing accurate information that would identify challenges and support future planning. And I do agree with you, this was really important post COVID to see exactly how many beds we had. Currently, a community bed management system has been developed for the provision of real time bed data. This will be progress for a rollout across the HEC in the coming months. In the meantime, the HEC complies a monthly bed register report of public residential care centres for older persons. As of the 31st of August, the bed register records a total of 256 designated nursing home support scheme beds in Galway, inclusive of all open and temporary closed beds. 238 of these beds are open, of which 206 were occupied. The data in relation to the waiting list is not collected nationally. This information is held at a local level, which is affected by the ongoing industrial action, which is extremely frustrating for me as, as a minister that this information is available, but it's not being, being passed on at the moment. But just to give you the breakdown, so we've Aris Macdara 32, Aris Wirra Community Nursing Unit 19, Aris Ronan, who, which I'm not familiar with, 10, St Anne's Community Nursing Unit 21, St Brendan's Home 87, Unit 56 Merlin Park Hospital 25, and Ballinasloe 44. So that comes to the 238, of which 206 beds under the Nursing Home Support Scheme Fair Deal are currently occupied. Thank you, Following up in relation to the audit, this, I have the advantage of having the question, the answer before me, and the specific figures for the homes are not in the answer. So you might give us those. You give us those. In relation to the audit that was carried out in, 2000, in 2022, following your intervention, is there a copy of that audit available? Is that public? Um, because I, I'm in Galway City, and I'm a firm believer in public, the public health system and public beds, but I'm watching with despair how five beds officially remain empty in the heart of the Gaeltacht in uh, Oris Victara. The one that you didn't know is the Iron Islands. It's the main Oris Ronan on the Iron Islands. And so I'm trying to, and then we have Merlin Park. I took the trouble of checking the HEQA report for Merlin Park, for Unit 5 and 6, glowing report, compliant on every, on every level. By comparison then, and it, it touches on your own area, the Apparee um, and the home that's closed, and they own eight or nine homes throughout the country. One of them is in Galway. I looked at the HEQA report for that. It's absolutely damning. So my concern is, what happens when the health board takes over? What, what's the risk? What's the cost? And obviously, I'll stop and I come back, sorry. Yeah. Deputy, for your questions. Look, I, as Minister, are after being on the record, working with Minister Donnelly, that I don't want to see any more public capacity close at any level. Um, so, just to let you know that there, this, the, the, the upcoming projects in Galway include a new 60 bed unit in Merlin Park, um, which would be an increase in capacity on the 25 that's already there, and a 40 bed unit in St Anne's in Clifton. I announced that today. I know it has been announced previously, but progress is being made now in, rela in relation to that. And you will know that um, recently um, the Helen and Joe Tool um, CNU in Tume was opened with 50 beds, a fantastic facility, and residents will be moving into it shortly. I think it's also we need to no notice that there were also 12 short stay beds at Clifton District Hospital. So even though older people need long stay beds um, under the fair deal, but we also need to step down the transitional beds, the respite beds, which is really, really important. And I'll come back in relation to your question on Apparee in the next piece.
a subject like this is very difficult in a minute. And so if we look at the new one that's going to be built in Clifton, it was supposed to be 50, it's gone back to 40, inexplicably when there's a great demand for it. And then we look at the vacancies that are there, as I mentioned in Oris, Victor and Cairo, inexplicably. I'm trying to find out what is the waiting list for Cairo? What's the waiting list for Merlin Park? And I don't expect you to have this at your fingertips, but I do expect to be able to get it at my fingertips very quickly from a source. And then we look at, go back to the Apparee, because I'm extremely concerned that we've promoted a private system. Over 81% of the nursing homes are owned privately, most of them for profit. And here we are with Apparee and the HEPA report for the one in Galway is, is really, it's worth, you have to look at it, non-compliant with fire regulations, non-compliant with staffing, and non-compliant with others, in addition to you. So the, the energy of the health executive is going in to taking back the private nursing homes that have failed on governance issues and other issues. And we're not going ahead to roll out a public system. We're down to 13%. Finally, if I just could on Mulrani, which is outside my area, but I know the man there and the sent the nursing home up there. They've written to you in October. It's a non-for-profit nursing home and they're struggling. It's the most wonderful example of a nursing home and care. Thanks. In Mulrani, sir. I've been deeply distressed over the last and worried and have um, be, been intervening with um, and working with HICWA and his department and the HSE in relation to the APRI nursing homes. Um, 15 companies in Ireland own 10,700 beds in the private sector. Um, that's the reality of the situation we're dealing with at the moment. On the 6th, I think it was, of September, um, HICWA um, published uh, 50 HICWA reports. 17 of them were compliant and 33 had non-compliance. I read each and every one of them. Um, six APRI living homes were, um, were listed and I read every one of them and there was very, very deep concerns. HICWA have mine and Minister Donnelly's full support um, to go into these homes and to make the necessary changes. And they will try to work with every nursing home to put in place a compliance plan. That didn't happen. So one of the APRI living in Kinsale has closed, one in my own area, only 20 minutes in the road from me, um, APRI living Bally Gunner has closed. And last Friday week, um, the HSC took over the running of APRI living in Callan. Um, ap um, if I could just say, if you don't mind, um, Kion Corla, uh, in relation to HICWA, they are keeping a very, very special eye and focus on the APRI living homes at the moment.